Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting crow with a witch. <laughs> I'm sipping on some apple tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Deep Yellow, Fire Red, Titanium White, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Umber which I like to call brown, Burnt Sienna which sometimes I call rust, <laughs> and Chrome orange and of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing and then I have three brushes from my personal brush line which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush then I have a number four and a number one round synthetic brush brushes and I may refer to these as small medium and large or I'll just call them out as I use them and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase in my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what I'm going to be doing for the first step is I'm going to be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium number four round to pre-mix a custom color. The colors that I'm going to be using in this step are white, yellow, burnt sienna, orange, and red and brown. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a gradient in my background or on my base coat. So this is going to start the process of some fantastic atmospheric dimension in our painting. So I have pre-mixed the color that I am going to be starting with, which I'm just going to call this color, um, we'll call it tan for lack of a better color. It could be a beige, it could be a light peach, it could be a light yellow. Um, it's pretty neutral, so I'm just going to call it tan. So this is it right here. How I achieved this color is a whole bunch of white. So a lot of white, and then I added a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my burnt sienna. So it's really kind of a super pale, um, almost like a skin tone, but you could make it darker or lighter. This is going to be the, the, light, um, the lightest color that we're going to be using in this gradient for that background in order to get there to be a lot of atmospheric dimension in our, in our scenery. So this is the color I'm headed for. You can see it kind of next to my skin tone how it's pretty similar in color but a lot lighter. So that's kind of where I'm headed with that. And then once I've got the color that I would like, I can put my mixing tool away. And I'm going to pick up some of that custom color. I'm going to be painting a lot of my canvas with this custom color. And then what I'm going to do, it, I'm going to be painting a lot of the top 
And then I'm going to be coming down kind of in a, oh, I'm just going to kind of do this so you can see about where I'm going to be bringing this color in about this amount of area in the canvas before I start introducing any additional colors. So I'm just going to use this light color to kind of start the process of my gradient. And then I'm going to introduce my additional colors, which are going to be my orange, my red, and then I'm going to be putting some brown. So I'm going to have it really light up at the top like this, and then I'm going to start introducing my other colors. So I'm going to pick up some of my um, tan color plus a little bit of orange. So I have tan and orange on my brush, and I can start to kind of put it around the sides. And you can blend it right into that um, that middle tone or that middle area, something like this. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. I'm really just kind of looking to um, start start the process. I will be doing another step on this background. I just really want to get this um, these colors to start to merge together in order to give me um, the makings or the start of my atmospheric kind of dimension. I just picked up a little bit more of my um, tan color so I could get these two sections to just blend a little bit more. And you don't really need to do uh, any specific brush stroke. I'm going to, in a future step, I'm going to be using more of a circular brush stroke just so I can have almost like a misty type of appearance to it. But you could, at this stage, kind of use any brush stroke. I'm flipping back and forth between crisscross, maybe a little circular every now and again to get these to blend a little bit better, but nothing too invasive at this point. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my orange plus my tan to get it just a little bit further down here with this uh, kind of mid-tone with these two colors combined on my brush. And then when I get about down to here, this is where I'm going to start introducing more just orange. So you'll see how it's going to start to get darker and darker. And then as after I get a little bit of this orange on, I'm going to introduce a little bit of red and then I'm going to introduce some brown. So this way what I'm doing is I'm getting it to go darker and darker as it goes down towards the bottom of my canvas, which is going to give me this fabulous gradient and a lot of um, depth within the painting. So that's pretty good in through there. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of red on my dirty brush and you'll see how this is going to transition right into um, the darker tone of the brown, which I'll be using in just a second. So the bottom portion of where I'm putting this darker area is not a, a huge area. It's pretty far towards the bottom of my canvas. So that way, when my witch is walking through, she's walking right into the light of that background. Now I'm picking up some brown on my dirty brush and I'm just gonna close out the bottom of the of the canvas with the with the brown paint down in through here and then I will be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done don't worry about doing a second coat or anything like that I mean you could if you want to <laughs> don't let me prevent you from doing a second coat but I'm not going to be doing one because I know my next step will be taking care of any anything that I want to uh, make modifications on so you can just wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting some atmospheric dimension. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my tan color, white, yellow, uh, maybe some orange, definitely brown and black. And if I go into any of the burnt sienna or red or blue, I'm not going into blue, but if I go into any of the burnt sienna or red, I'll let you know, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to at this point. So what I'm in essence going to be doing is I want to do a second layer on the entire canvas, um, illuminating a little bit more this center area. So I'll be using a little bit of white with my tan, maybe a touch of yellow, and then uh, I'm going to be using a circular brush stroke to give it like an airy, misty type of a look. Then I'm going to Make sure that it kind of blends in with these um, with these orange tones. And then after that, I'm gonna be adding a really dark 
border. So I'll be using black and brown to, with like a dry brush technique to give myself a nice dark border that we'll be using to merge into our trees and allow this to really have some great depth into it. So I'm gonna start with the light area because it's farther away. We'll get that done and then we'll come and do that outside area. I'm gonna start with a touch of white and tan on my brush at the same time. So about equal parts of both. I'm gonna start in through here and I'm gonna be using this circular brush stroke. I really just want it to look nice and airy and have like a misty type of a look to it. So this is where the circular brush stroke is going to benefit me. So that's about as large of an area as I'm gonna do of that lightest color. Now I'm gonna go into my tan just to make sure it blends in well, something like this. And again, up at the top, that's gonna to end up being really nice and dark. Now I'm gonna pick up tan plus a teeny touch of yellow. The yellow will really make it super duper yellow and I, I just want a little hint of it. So just a teeny tiny touch and I'm gonna go into the section that is a little bit below that and just kind of get it to blend in a little bit. So that works out pretty well. And you can make this in whatever tone you want. If you want yours more yellow than I have mine, then make it more yellow than I have mine. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my tan plus a little bit of orange. So this is going to just merge right down into that um, other colors that we had already established. And again, I'm using the circular brush stroke in order to give it that airiness. So you can cross over these colors, let them intermingle with each other, let it really look, um, you know, as airy as you want it to look. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna kind of allow myself to, to run out of paint. We're going to um, be doing the exterior now. So again, I didn't need to bring it all the way out just enough to where it's going to start to um, intermingle with my trees and stuff. And then um, if you feel that you want to add more, you can certainly do that. So that looks pretty good to me. Actually, I feel like I might want to put just a touch more over here and go in orange with a touch of my tan. I feel like this needs a little bit more finessing because I can see some of my canvas underneath and I want to just make sure that it looks fully executed before I uh, before I start overlapping. And again, because I'm using hardly any paint, this paint is drying really fast for me, which is gonna allow me to intermingle the other colors um, that I want to do. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. Wash and dry it. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be, and give it a, a nice good squeeze on my paper towel to get uh, that moisture out. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be bringing this dark border kind of uh, all the way around, which is gonna be just a, adding to the depth of the trees that I'm gonna be putting on. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of brown paint on my brush, so just a little bit of brown paint. You can even start down in these bottom corners where you already have your brown established. So that'll be kind of a nice safe place for you to start and to just kind of um, get into the groove of what we're doing here. And then I'm just gonna kind of go up these sides. I'm really just, again, using a dry brush technique in order to get this really soft kind of um, smoky, misty kind of look all around the sides, almost giving it a nice border, if you will. So just allowing for it to intermingle, but it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. Again, we're gonna be putting trees and all kinds of stuff on top of this. This is in essence really just to make sure that we have a nice dark base behind um, those trees, but it doesn't have to be all the way black, just something that's gonna give us the illusion of maybe some stuff off in the distance um, and allowing for it to just kind of border this canvas. And again, I'm just using brown at this point, allowing for myself to get this nice, um, soft but dark atmosphere around the borders and edges to the canvas and allowing for it to just kind of overlap my um, my other colors a little bit but not not so much so that you can't see them see through them and of course I'm just kind of allowing for this to 
to have some softer edges every now and again like this. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of black paint and bring um, a touch of blackness into it as well. So a tiny bit of black paint. I didn't wash my brush, just using a little bit of black paint. And I'm going to intermingle the black in with that brown. So again, this is just giving me just a little bit of extra um, darkness around the exterior edges of the of the painting. I again, I don't need it to go all the way black because we are going to be adding additional information into here. So this is just kind of setting the stage of the um, of the atmosphere for us. And again, just kind of giving us a little bit of a border. I am um, leaving the black a little bit further outside than the brown. I brought the brown a little bit further in towards the middle of the canvas. The black I'm putting a little bit farther out towards the exterior or keeping it a little bit further, you know, more towards that um, outside edge as opposed to pulling it in too much. So this is something like this. Maybe the, the brown gets pulled in a little bit further or got pulled in a little bit further. And then once I've got this on here, again, you can see it's not blended 100%. It's just really giving us this nice place to start, um, that atmosphere, atmospheric information. And then we are going to be using our medium. Oh, actually, uh, I think I want to do my my drawing for the next step. So we're going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our witch and our bird. I'm going to be using my white chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like. I have a feeling when I get to these lighter areas, I might need to go into a darker utensil so you guys can see it, but you'll be able to see white chalk on yours the whole way. It's just the camera thing that, that makes it difficult for you to see in these light spots. So I'll be switching back and forth. Um, I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and basic shapes. We're just going for a nice simple outline of our witch and the bird. We're not going for any fine tuned detail at this stage. We just need something that will guide us through the painting process. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, the center of my canvas is somewhere in here. Then what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to go to the right of that about two inches and make myself another marker. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to travel down to the bottom of my canvas until I'm about two inches away from the bottom of my canvas and I'm at the same distance away from the edge of my canvas as this one. So just straight down from that will give you another marker right in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight up from here until I'm about uh, one, two, three, almost four inches from the top of my canvas and give myself another marker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these three markers with a vertical line. So something like this. It doesn't have to be straight. This is just going to guide us into making the shape of the witch. So something like that will work for me. Now we're going to make a few markers that are going to represent different parts of her body. So I'm going to, where I made this mark in through here, I'm going to go up from that about a half of it, a quarter to a half of an inch give myself one marker there, and then I'm gonna come down from here about an inch and give myself another marker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to here and I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the top of my uh, line and give myself another marker. What I've just done for you is giving you points as to this is where her shoulder line is gonna be this is where her waistline is going to be, and this is where her hips are going to be. So now we can just build the width of our witch in whatever which way we would like. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just start with my shoulders. So I can take from this line and just bring it out maybe about an inch on either side, something like that. Then I can go down to her waist, which is right here. I want my witch to look like she's in 
motion of walking. So what I'm going to do for the waist and for the hips is I'm going to push them a little bit to the right of this center line. So here is my waist right here. So I'm going to give a little bit, maybe a half of an inch over on the left and then on the right, a little bit more than that. So her waist is a little bit more narrow than her shoulder on this side. And of course, it's quite a bit more narrow than the one on the left side. And then I'm going to travel down to the hip line and I'm going to bring this left side out a little bit farther than this one. And then the right side can go even farther than that shoulder if you want, a little bit further. So that's going to just swing her hips a little bit to the right and make her look like she's in motion. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these three outside points. So I'm going to take from here, going to just bring this down to here, swing it in for her waist and out to her hip. Same thing over here, bring this down to her waist and swing it out to her hip. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to put her the bottom portion of her dress on. You can make this as flowy as you want. What I, this marker here indicates is where her feet are hitting the ground. So you could do it you could do it straight down and then kick it out if you wanted to. You could go straight down and kick it out both to the sides, whatever works for you. I want her to look like she's really got a long train to her dress. So I'm gonna take it from here. I'm just gonna kind of ripple it just a little bit over here and just out like that. And then on this side, I'm gonna bring it a little bit to the right like this and then taper it in and then just kind of bring it something like this. This is going to kind of fade into the ground anyways, so you can, you know, have fun with that. The right arm I'm going to do next. So the right arm is just kind of, kind of, um, hanging, if you will. Again, she's walking, but, um, her right arm is just kind of dangling. The elbow will always be around the waist. So I'm going to come out from the waist just a little bit and give myself a little marker just so I know where that elbow is going to be. I'm going to come about straight down from this exterior shoulder just to my um, elbow. And then I'm going to come up from my waist just a little bit to do the inside part of that arm. And then I want her to look like she's got some long flowy um, sleeves to her dress. So I'm going to actually bump it out like that. And then on this side, I'm going to just kind of wiggle it, wave it down until it's just past, uh, maybe about one and a half to two inches past her hip and then bring it here. So her arm is in front of her hip in here. And then I'm going to just mark where I want her hand to go. We're just going to see a little, a little piece of her hand kind of coming out like that. Her left arm is going to be like this, um, kind of just... Well, her elbow is going to be by her, her waist, but it's going to be kind of like just leaning out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where her elbow is going to be. Her elbow is going to be right around her waist in through here, but it could be behind on our side of her back. So something like that will give me her elbow. So I can take from her shoulder and come down to about where that elbow is. And then I can kick it out to the left like this. And then from here, I can take this and just ripple it down like she's got some long sleeve. And then I can take this like this. So the edge of her sleeve is maybe about an inch and a half from the halfway point of your, of your canvas. And then you can just give a little, a little curved line like this for her hand, maybe a little thumb like that. Her head, the top of her head is right here. So I give you that marker because we're, we don't necessarily need to make the shape of her head or her face or anything like that, but I want her hat to be kind of um, tipped so it looks like she, again, is kind of in motion. So I know that this is the top of her head. I know that her head is not going to be much wider than her shoulders, so I can kind of build my hat off of what would be kind of the top of her head. I know it needs to be at least that wide, so I can build it from there. So if that's kind of the top of her head, I can take and I can make this fun, you know, which point to the hat, something like this, bring it maybe down in through there. And then I can put maybe a brim on something like this. You can make it whatever, which way that you want. Sorry, I'm going to say the word witch a lot. I don't mean to. Um, on this side here, you can kind of give it whatever shape that you'd like in through there. Maybe, I don't know if you can see this part 
as well on this light area. So let me just kind of use my pencil so you can see what I'm doing on this uh, lighter surface in through here. Um, so once I've got that, now all I need to do is put her hair on. So I can just take my my drawing utensil and just kind of give myself a loose idea of where I want that hair to go. You could even pull a couple of pieces out on this side over here. Maybe I've got it kind of, you know, flowing out past her arm in through here. You don't have to do much. We just want to know the width of her head, which we know is no wider than that right now. So that's going to give us um, that information. You could, if the um, drawing itself, these guidelines are, um, if you feel that they're going to pose you any issues, you can take your, your brush with a little bit of water if you've used chalk and you can erase those interior lines if you want to. And this will give you a little bit more of a um, clear kind of picture as to what you've just done. So I've got my hat, I've got my hair is going to be overlapping my body. I've got the this elbow in through here, which will be important later. Um, and you can certainly erase down in through here if you wanted to as well. And that gives you kind of a broader idea of what her body looks like. So if you needed to or wanting to make any adjustments, you could certainly do that. Then I'm going to do my little bird. So I'm going to start my bird with a tiny little circle for the head. So I'm going to come up from this hand and just make myself a little, uh, uh, we might need the pencil on this part, a little circle in through here, just a little tiny circle. And then I'm going to make uh, the shape of an egg right behind it, but it's going to be kind of tipped where the pointy part is down in through here. So that's going to be the start of my, of my bird. I'm going to put a little beak coming off of here that's going to be pointing down towards her as if it's looking to land on her, on her hand or wherever. I'm going to connect this bottom part to the chest and then this top part to the top part of the circle. So I've got the body and, and the head all taken care of. There's um, a exterior wing that I'm going to put over in here. So I'm going to come up from that top of that circle and just give myself a little shape like this. It'll take care of that one. And then I have a big wing on this side. So from here, I can bring this and just kind of bring it up just a little bit. And then I can give myself a few feathers that are going to poke out in through here. I want this um, side of this wing to end somewhere in through here. So almost half, well, maybe about a third of the way up my little egg shape is where I want that to end. And you don't need to do anything fancy, just kind of ripple your edges and then maybe um, give yourself the a couple of little edge feathers in through there. And then there's a big tail feather. So I'm going to take from in through here and in through here. I'm going to bring this out maybe about another um, maybe about another inch or so. So the bottom of this tail feather is almost, maybe it's just a little bit higher than her, the cuff of her sleeve, something like that. And I can, now that I've got kind of these three points, I can take and I can give myself these, this exterior, um, little, uh, shape that's going to resemble the tail feather kind of spread out and ready to, ready to land, something like that. And I think that's all I need to do. That's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You could certainly make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. I'm going to be using my number four round brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for the bird and our witch. I'm going to be using my number four round brush and I'm just going to be using black. You could, uh, of course, use any uh, kind of brush that you want. You could use any style of um, painting strokes that you want. But right at this stage, I'm really just looking for a base coat on these guys. And I don't need to do anything fancy. You may have noticed that my bird does not have legs yet <laughs> because I'm going to put those on later. They're just little tiny um, details that sometimes in my drawing process, I don't like to get um, 
confused with the tiny, not sometimes, all the time. <laughs> I don't like to get confused with the little tiny details. So I will save small um, objects like the, like the feet of this burn <laughs> for, for later. And you can see right now, I'm just gonna be painting in a solid color. You can, if you need to, I'm, I'm stopping right now so I can explain this part. Where this neckline meets that back feather, if you don't wanna lose that line, just leave the evidence of your guideline in between those two sections. That'll make your um, future painting process a little bit easier uh, so you don't get those two sections confused. The other sections I think are um, easily identified just by the exterior shape that we've given to the bird, but um, this back wing meeting the uh, neck I think could get a little skewed out of proportion if you don't um, if you don't pay attention, not pay attention, but if you lose where you wanted that original guideline. And then I'm just gonna kind of color this in. And I'm slowing down so I don't make my bird any bigger than I had intended to, um, which happens to me a lot when I'm, when I'm doing these kind of um, drawings and then converting it into a painting. I do have a tendency of, um, going outside my lines, my guidelines, if my guidelines disappear. So I tend to leave them a little bit um, until, until I know that I'm, I'm safe, but we're going with a pretty dark color right now for the, um, for the base. So it, I'm, I'm certain, I, I'm not certain, but I most likely will not go outside my guidelines, but um, you know, if you feel that you want to leave them a little bit, you certainly can. And you can also reshape as you go through this, um, through the first layer process. If you, like I just wanted to put a little, a little feather coming out there, you can certainly add any information. You can take away any information as you're doing it. If you're saying, oh, well, I don't think I want that, that feather there that I put in my drawing, then don't put it. You can always erase your drawing or put you know, paint over it with, with your background color or whatever you feel is necessary to bring it into um, the place that is comfortable to you. So once I've got my bird done, which I'm pretty close to getting done right now, once I've got that done, I'm going to take the same approach for my witch. The only um, couple of areas that I wanna keep my, um, my guideline visible is probably in through here where it meets the hat. So from the hat to uh, the hairline, that's a, for me a pretty important meeting point simply because I wanna know where the, the rim of that hat is gonna be so I, um, so I don't put it too high or too low. I feel like it's at a good um, position right now and if I lose that line, I might skew it and make it go straight across or flatten it or something that I hadn't intended to do. So again, just leaving that guideline helps me through my painting process. And then the edge of my witch's hat, I've got it kind of tattered. You could certainly make yours uh, not so tattered if you wanted to. You could make yours nice and smooth and like it's a brand new spanking new hat. I just thought that it looked pretty cool if she had a, you know, a weathered kind of appearance to her hat as if, you know, she's she's been around a while and she's she's used this hat on many occasions to do her, you know, fancy walks through the forest. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna kind of go down this side. And, you know, I am slow, again, slowing down around my edges just because I, I wanna be able to um, modify them if I want or just keep them where I had intended. So I'm just kind of slowing down a little bit. And if you're finding that you're not getting your smooth edges that you want, you may uh, want to add a little bit of moisture to your paint and or you could add that with water and or liquid medium. The other area that I wanna um, keep identity of is this elbow in through here. So I'm gonna just leave a little evidence of 
that elbow in through there. I'm just going to be giving the hint of it when I go to when I paint in um, my details later. So I don't need to leave much of it, just a little, even this whole area of the back is going to be her hair. So I don't, I don't need to do anything fancy here. Even her shoulders, that's going to be covered with hair. A lot of it is going to be just disguised amongst, um, you know, the other, the other details, but something like the elbow that's behind her waist, I want to kind of attend to. Her hairline or her hair that's flying out, I'm going to put a little bit more water or a little bit of water on my brush with my paint so I can take and give a couple of little skinnier pieces kind of flying out. We will have another step that's going to um, uh, make her hair look fancier. It'll give it more of, um, of a believable color and texture. But right now I am going to pull out just a couple of those little pieces. So we have um, the silhouette of her where I want it. I wanted to do this initial coat of her first before I uh, finished my, my forest trees because I wanted to not run the risk of um, putting my trees, pulling my trees in too far. So knowing where she is, where she is at is going to help me to um, give her, give her her focus. If I had done my forest trees first, I might have brought them too far into the painting. So this really helped to kind of control where I wanted her to go because she is my focal point. Um, and then I'll build my forest trees around it. So as I'm doing her sleeve in through here, I am in my head. I know that when you put your arm up, if you've got a kind of a loose fabric, it's going to lay almost flat on the top and then hang down at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing. I'm making it um, kind of loose to, or loose at the bottom and it's kind of tighter or closer to her skin up at the top. And then her little hand in through here. So her hand will be closer to the top of that um, of that fabric and then her hand would kind of come out if it's like this I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna bring her fingers up like this and then maybe she's got her her thumb is kind of out a little bit and in the final details I may even put um, well, it already looks like she almost has it on there. A little long witch fingernail. You could certainly just kind of pull out a little, a little fingernail to make it look like she's really, you know, taking on her witch role. <laughs> so something like that will work. That looks good to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side in through here. So again, just kind of making sure I know where that shoulder is. So knowing where the shoulder is, you can certainly, um, adapt that hair whatever way that you want so if you if you've placed the shoulders in a believable um, spot then the hair can will just lay right on top or around them as you know if that head is as wide as it should be so I've got the head and the um, shoulder where I want them so now I can just start pulling out pieces of hair making it look like she's in motion and again, a little bit of water on my brush allows for me to um, get more um, singular pieces or those little skinnier pieces. And again, I'm going to have another step to the hair that will allow us to bring even more out. I think I want some down by her elbow too. So let me just get her to finish the arm color and then I will um, add some more hair around there. So this is, oh, I want to keep a, a little bit of my guideline from her hip to her sleeve also. So that's another um, area that I'm going to leave a little bit visible so I know where that hip goes and I can accentuate it with my highlights and stuff. And her elbow, this arm might be, you know, in motion back a little bit, but I'm feeling like it's a little bit slender. So I'm going to just pull in the inside. There we go. That looks a little bit better to me. And then her hand. And when doing something like this, if you want to draw your own, like her hand, just in relationship to your own body, where does your hand fall if you have it 
just hanging down by your side. And that's how you can gauge things of this nature and put them in a believable position. So something like that. And then I've got just her hand or her fingers. I've got her with pretty long sleeves. So I'm just going to kind of pull out her finger in through there and then maybe her thumb in through here. That looks pretty good to me. A little witch fingernail. And now I can put a little bit more hair if I wanted to, especially um, maybe we've got some down in through here and I'm just making hers long and flowy but you could certainly have your witch having shorter hair or curlier hair whatever you want and then when it comes to the body nothing fancy here and <laughs> just taking that black paint you could even use a bigger brush if you wanted to I'm gonna leave just a little um, evidence of that hip in through here just so I know where I want that to go and then as I come down in through here just a little ripple along um, the dress to give it motion like that and then this whole area down in through here i'm going to actually um, when i do my final pass with it i am going to be incorporating some additional colors to it so it if I don't get this jet black or 100% Mars black in this case, um, it's all right because I've got another step to go that is going to incorporate different colors into it. Um, but I am kind of using a directional uh, brush stroke as I put this black on just kind of in the direction that I feel the, the fabric is flowing. So something like that. You could even, as you get down into this darker stuff, put a little bit of water on your brush and that will allow it to maybe uh, show some peekaboo spots of those orangey tones. Again, not necessary, um, but if it happens and you like it, that's great. Um, but you, again, it doesn't need to be perfect at this point. And then once you've got this done, as you can see, I still see some of my, um, some of my colors underneath here at the bottom, which is awesome. I'm, I'm digging that, so I'm leaving it. <laughs> so once you've got this, we are going to be using uh, this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint all of our forest trees around the edges. I'm gonna have some around the ground too. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my number four round. I might switch if I need to, to my number one, but I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna to need to or not. Um, the colors, the dominant colors I'm gonna be using are brown and black, but I might, if I want some more, if some out of focus type of ones around here, I might um, use some of my other colors as well, but I'm thinking right now it's just going to be brown and black, but if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to start with some brown paint and I'm going to make a whole bunch of um, what I'm going to call just squiggly kind of brush or um, sticks and stuff that are going to, that are coming from the bot, from the floor of the forest. You could almost consider these to be like um, kind of wild pieces of um, sticks and whatever you want them to be really. I'm going to, I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush in order to give me um, the ability to have these tinier marks as I do this. And I'm starting with brown so I can have um, a transition from the, um, uh, from kind of lighter tones as they're farther away into darker tones as they become um, closer to the viewer. And I'm using water on my brush in order to give my brown paint a transparency. So what that means is it's, you're going to be able to see some of the color behind it. So that's going to make it look like it's more off in the distance and it's got, um, it, it'll increase the depth of the, of the, of the painting. So again, this is brown with some water on my brush and I'm just doing some wiggly kind of, uh, marks that are going to resemble just, uh, forest 
forest stuff. <laughs> Just stuff that you find on the forest floor in a spooky Halloween uh, witchy kind of forest. Whenever I think spooky um, in my paintings, I'm, I always think of like um, broken kind of branches that have um, wiggle to them. And I, when I'm, when I'm painting that, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, okay, well, I just want to have these little kind of broken type of branches and stuff coming out. So you can really make it into whatever you want. I am going to put some of these, uh, brown ones up at the, uh, you know, all the way around. So this way, it, as the viewer is looking at it, they're going to see these different tones of um, light stuff and dark stuff, and it, it'll it allow them to understand that um, there's some branches that are farther away, some branches that are closer up, and again, the brown is going to push it back further than the black that I'm going to be using in a minute. So again, just some brown, giving myself the a lot of little kind of um, branches, just almost enveloping the exterior edges of the canvas so it makes it look like there's a, a border it, to it um, and then I'll be putting some black ones which will be closer to the viewer and maybe even a little bit bigger than the ones that I'm doing and for me when I'm when I'm doing this kind of um, work or detail I try not to be um, too systematic. So I'm going to weight them differently on one side than the other. I'm going to make them, I'm going to attempt to make them look differently from one side of the painting to the other. So that way it gives it um, a more organic type of look to it. And so it doesn't look like I thought about every single branch that I was putting on there because in my opinion, Mother Nature does not think of every single little branch as she's putting it into place and making sure that she's placing it properly. So for me, doing it this way and making, you know, one branch bigger than the other is going to, you know, or going in a different direction, that's going to make it look more natural. So that looks good for me for, for my brown ones. Now I'm going to um, go into my black and these are going to be larger and they're going to be closer to the viewer. So again, I can use black plus water on my brush. That's going to give me some nice fluidity. I can have maybe some almost like trunk-like um, ones coming out in through here. So I'm pushing my brush and kind of wiggling it as I'm um, pushing it down towards that base. So it gives it um, different widths along that, um, along that trunk or that that branch and and I want it to kind of look like it's almost merging into my witch for me <laughs> you don't have to do that if you don't want to but I'm gonna so you can kind of do skinny skinny and then just push your brush a little bit further that's going to give you um that wider more um kind of thicker look to it and again make it into whatever you want i'm i'm just having super fun doing these <laughs> so you can have as many as you want or as few as you want again don't worry about how they're kind of transitioning down towards the bottom yet will be um i'm gonna get it to flow into my my witch a little bit better in a little bit so i've got this one and then i can kind of push my my brush to give me this fun um wiggly type of tree trunk going in through here that looks super cool and <laughs> you can you know have as much fun as i'm having doing it <laughs> but if you're if you're going about it and you're like oh they all look the same just start somewhere else put you know put the painting upside down put it you know in a way that will allow you to get a, a different look to it um, and again i'm using water plus my plus my paint on my brush so I can have these clean edges to it but um, a nice fluid motion. I do want it to go pretty darn dark around the edges so I'm gonna um, allow for some pretty dark ones to um, to just kind of 
allow for that darkness along the edges to balance the darkness of my witch. So the witch is definitely my focal point, but I don't necessarily want her to be the only thing in the painting that has that black tone to it. So that's why these edges that I'm, that I'm creating are pretty important um, with this black tone. So it can, it can balance that, that, um, the color palette that I'm using. So you can, of course, do yours in whatever manner that you want. But if, if you're finding she looks too heavy, um, not in, in her actual size, but in the weight of the painting, it may just be because she's the, she's the darkest thing on there and nothing else is helping to, to balance her. It doesn't mean that these black edges are going to take the focal point away from her. It's just going to help balance the painting and make it, um, more, um, I don't want to call it more appealing to look at, but definitely easier for the, for the, uh, viewer to understand and to, um, to be guided where you want them to be guided. So again, having fun with these broken branches, and putting them in different directions. I'm digging this. Gonna put a whole bunch up in through here to, again, kind of weight it properly. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be the same from one side to the other. I just want mine to have a lot of, um, you know, fun tree mo motion in it <laughs> and to have this nice, you know, kind of enchanted, uh, you know, spooky kind of feel to it, um, but, you know, not too scary. We don't necessarily need it to be too scary, but definitely having um, this fun, you know, almost like she's ready to, you know, have a black cat come along with her on her walk. <laughs> you can really have as much fun as you want. And I'm thinking that that's pretty, pretty good. I, I'm totally digging the way that it's looking. I love these guys in through here. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to be doing for the next step, actually, I think I can just kind of get this to blend in just a little bit more to her dress in through here. That looks awesome. Um, so once you've got it to this point and you feel comfortable with, with what you've done, you can certainly play with it more if you want to, put any additional marks and stuff in it, put more trees, put more branches, put anything that you want. But I'm going to be using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got as many little branches, oh, now I've got these little tiny cool ones kind of coming in through here. Uh, once you've got as many um, branches as you want. <laughs> I, I have a hard time once I start getting into these little tiny details, um, stopping, but you might have an easier time stopping than me. <laughs> once you can stop, we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our bird. I'm using my small number one round brush. The colors I'm going to be using are black, blue, white, and brown, and maybe a little bit of yellow and orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just add minimal details on here, which is gonna just bring our bird to life. It definitely needs some legs and some um, claws or talons or feet or what, I'm not quite sure the proper terminology, but we're going to add this detail now so we can um, bring our bird to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first tackle this little wing over in through here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue and white. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding kind of a shiny part to the top of this wing. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing the wing, um, the top, the other side of the top of the wing, and then it kind of flips over and we're going to, and we see these little, um, the edges. So I'm going to take this blue and white, and I'm going to give myself this, um, shiny area at the top of this, um, section right before it meets, uh, the, the, those little feathers. I'm picking up a touch of black now on my brush to make sure that I've got this whole area painted in as much as I want. And then I'm going to, on the um, 
on the feather tips, I'm just going to pick up more black with a little bit of water on my brush just so I can clean up those, um, the edges of it. Because right now I can, um, they were a little messy from the first, um, from the first pass. So this time I can just kind of clean it up a little bit more. So that looks good to me. Now I'm going to just move to the face. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And all I really need to do for the face is separate the beak from um, the top of the head. So I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of brown and white. Just a little bit of brown and white on my brush. I'm going to come about um, halfway down from the top of the head to the tip of the beak and give myself this little um, light part right in through here. And what this is going to do is it's going to make that uh, this part look a little shiny before it hits uh, the beak. So consider this to be maybe the forehead part. And I don't need to do much in through there. Then I'm going to um, just add a tiny bit of white on the tip of the beak in through here. Just give myself a little shine like that. And you could go back into that blue if you wanted to. A little bit on the beak will make it look nice and shiny. Again, not much, just a little tiny bit. I am going to pick up um, black in order to just make sure that I have it all painted in as much as I want to. Again, you don't have to go, uh, you know, as detailed as I'm going, but for me, I like to get these little, these little details in there. So that looks uh, pretty good to me. Little tiny, tiny. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that um, brown and white again, just to give myself a little light spot on the side of the um, face in through here and then I can wipe my brush off and pick up a little bit of black just to get it to to blend out so I don't need much this is really kind of in the shadows uh, it's on on the kind of dark side of the of the bird so I'm really just adding minimal amount of details to to bring it to life uh, in this wing in through here I don't really need to do much I just I'm gonna just kind of finesse it a little bit so I picked up some black make sure that this underside of the wing is nice and black in through here and then as I come out towards um, the tips of the wings I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown on my brush and then just kind of make sure um, give it a little bit of definition which is just teeny tiny bit of brown in through here it's not I mean you could add a little bit of white too if you wanted brown with a teeny touch of white just to give those a little bit of definition but not much at all is needed. I think I actually want to add a tiny bit more um, black. I think I feel like I want to put another, um, just finesse the tip of this one just a little bit more. There we go. Just bring it out just a little bit so it looks like it's got a little bit more motion. And then, um, then I'm gonna, I picked up black so I could make sure that I've got these little tips the way that I want them. And again, just kind of finessing it making sure that I've got as much detail as I want, which doesn't have to be much, just, you know, minimal amount of detail that makes you happy and satisfies your painterly eye. And then coming down these, this little side here, I've just got black on my brush to make sure that I've got it um, painted in as much as I want. And that looks good. And if you needed any or wanted any more detail, just pick up a little bit more of that, um, brown and white and that can just add just a teeny tiny bit of detail in through there. I'm going to do the same thing for the tail um, and the we're, we're going to finish the the belly part when we do the legs. So the tail again just a little bit of black is going to start me out. I'm going to go right up into this top side in through here and then towards those tips of the tail I'm just going to use brown and white and just bring um, just little highlights into them and if brown is too dull of a color for you this is where you could add a little orange if you wanted to but I'm digging the way that the um, brown and white is working for me but if you wanted to add anything more you certainly could add a little bit of the orange I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, black just to finesse the tips of these feathers a little bit make them as smooth as I want can bring them out a little bit. You can make them whatever, you know, works for you visually. And then I will hit those legs. So just finessing these little tips in through here so they get as smooth as I want them. 
That looks nice. So, oh, and I want a little highlight on the top of this wing. I forgot about that. So going back into my brown and white, I washed my brush. I want to put a um, little highlight in through here and right in through here to give the um, the edge of that of that wing. So something like that works out for me. Now I'm going to go into those legs. So I've got to um, add both legs. I'm going to uh, do it with brown and a touch of white so you can um, see where I'm headed here. So brown with a touch of white. I've got um, a leg. This is going to be the far leg. So this kind of comes directly. Oops. Hold on a second. I just got wet paint in the middle of my canvas here. Hold on while before this dries. This is a little water on my brush. I felt myself get my canvas dirty. There we go. Um, so back to the to the leg. I'm good. I have a little bit of brown and white on my brush at the same time. I've got the far leg right in through here. So I'm going to just make kind of like a thigh area putting a little bit of water on my brush so I can um, get the, the shape that I want. So something like that. And then it has um, the foot. So it's got like a, an ankle in through here. And then I've got a, um, a back claw. And then I have three front claws. One, two, and then three like that. I think it should be a little wider in that thigh, something like that. And then I've got um, the other leg kind of comes, is going to be on our side of the bird or on the closer side of the bird. So something like this is going to give me my other leg. It's got to go into the body a little bit. I'll get that to blend into the body a little bit better in a second. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of black. So you can see this one on top of the other one. I just picked up my um, a little bit of black on my dirty brush. This is going to cross over this leg in through here. And then I've got my little talons. One, two, and then the third one you can't really see. It's kind of in front. And then there's a, the other back one kind of comes in through here. So now that I've got them in place, I just got to manipulate them a little bit so they look a little bit more realistic. I just picked up a little bit of black on my brush so I can get that leg to just kind of merge into the body a little bit. I'm picking up a little bit more black to get the back side of this one to go dark so we can see it a little bit better like this. And I can put little kind of darkness within this claw if I want to just to give myself um, a little bit of detail. You could, if you wanted to, you could also um, bring in a little bit of yellow and um, white. This was where I was thinking I, I might put it in these um, claws, but let me see if I can get these claws a little bit pointier. There we go. Just give them their nice point like that, like they've really reaching out to make sure they, they grab on something like that. And I don't, gosh, I don't really think I need much else, but I'm going to go into the yellow and white just to put a tiny bit maybe of um, a little extra color. No, it's not needed. I'm not going to do it. So I think that's all I'm going to do to my bird. You can, of course, make any little adjustments that you feel might be necessary. We're going to use, uh, uh, we're going to use our medium round for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the hat and the dress. I am using my number four round. The colors I'm going to be using are black, yellow, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a green tone that we're going to be using as the color for her hat and her dress. So I have pre-mixed it on my palette here so you can see where I'm headed. This is it right in through here. So how I achieved this was I took a whole bunch of yellow, I added a tiny bit of white to it, and a tiny bit of black to it. 
the black and the yellow makes this fabulous green and then the white is going to just help a little bit with the opacity of it. So this is the color I'm shooting for. You could certainly use any green tone that you want. This one has a lot of, of a, um, yellow undertone to it, so it's gonna look really cool on our composition. So once I've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be putting it on her dress as well as her hat. Her hair is gonna be coming down um, her back, so I don't need to bring this all the way up to her shoulders, but I will put a little bit on her arms and stuff so you can, um, so we can have little peekaboo spots of her hair. So I have the green on my brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of it on her rear end as well because I want to show contour to her um, body. So I'm going to use it pretty heavy on her rear end. I'm going to make her waist a little bit darker but first let me just kind of get it on here i'm going to use the black that is my undertone to help me create these ripples in her dress as well as the movement of her dress as well as the contours of her body so i've got the green on in through here now what i'm doing with my brush is i'm just kind of rubbing it up her back so it's taking on some of that black that's underneath. So it'll be brighter where the paint is thicker and darker where the paint is thinner. There is a spot around her elbow that I'm gonna need to take care of as well. So I'm gonna use the uh, little bit of that green that's on my brush to get some on her arm. And then I'm gonna close that little elbow gap <laughs> in a second here. So again, I don't need it all up her back but just at least down at that bottom part of her back will work. And I'm going on her sleeve right now, so I'm gonna put a good amount up at the top, and you'll see how in a second this is gonna help me um, get a lot of dimension on these elements. So I'm gonna put my green pretty heavy up at the top, and then what I can do is I can just kind of pull it down in a thinner, manner and it's going to give me these ripple this ripple type of look in her in her cloth of her of her um of her dress that little gap between her elbow i'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black on my dirty brush and i'm just going to make sure that i close that gap right in through there that was my guide to let me know where her elbow was i'm going to um, put a little bit more green on my brush while i'm up here i'm going to put some on this other arm so you could put it heavier on her elbow to tell the viewer that that elbow is closer to them <laughs> and then I wipe my brush off and I just kind of rub it up that arm so it's a little bit darker going up underneath what's going to be her hair and then her um, her sleeve coming down here I don't need a whole lot because it's I can have a little shadow by her um, on the side where it's meeting her rear end, but I, maybe I'll put it a little bit heavier on this right side, maybe a little heavier down at the cuff of her sleeve, but I wanna show a little bit of movement in it, so that looks pretty good to me. And if you paint outside your lines, that's okay. <laughs> so now on her dress part, I'm gonna load my brush pretty heavy with my, with my green. I'm starting up at that rear end, which is where I'm gonna have the the heaviest of the green paint so like this and this is telling the viewer that the rear end kind of sticks out the most then what i can do is um before i pick up more paint i'm going to just kind of rub it down and give myself the ripples of the dress so i can take this and i'm using the side of my brush not the tip of my brush so the side of my brush i am reloading because i want more paint <laughs> the side of my brush is going to almost give me like a scrubbing type of effect and this will give me the ripples in the dress and show the movement of it so something like this will work out and just kind of blend this up just a little bit to that rear end and then i'm going to pick up more more of my green now so i can have this green translate down the side of the dress as well so you so the viewer understands that the dress doesn't just stop here but it stops you know, it comes down here too. You can also pick up the green plus black as well. So if you want that tone to be darker as it comes down in through here, you can pick up both of those colors at the same time. 
and that's going to allow you to get darker tones of that green down at the bottom. So this is what I'm doing right now. I've got green and, oops, I guess I had white on somewhere in there too. Um, I'm just using the green and the black and just kind of allowing it to merge into my landscape. So this way it really makes it look like she is one with nature. And then just getting this to kind of come up here. And this is where now, since I'm, uh, since I'm kind of going through the final pass here, you can certainly start or get rid of your guidelines. So I put a little bit more green on my brush and I'm seeing my chalk mark along the edges so I can just take my paint and get rid of those guidelines, something like this. And you can splay your skirt out if you wanted to, over to the right, whatever is visually appealing to you. This is just a fun way to make some fabric that looks like it's, like it's moving. So I'm gonna pull this green up into the hat as well. So I'm gonna uh, pick up some of that green. I do wanna have kind of like a, a band um, around like this part of the hat. So I'm gonna separate out a little piece here. I'm gonna put my green here and then kind of move it up. And then I'm gonna put some of this green on the on the brim of the hat, just put my hand in wet paint <laughs> on the brim of the hat and through here so I can give myself another kind of um, little area like that. I'm gonna put a black band in that center area and then I'm gonna approach this in a similar way. So if I want it to be um, brighter, uh, like along the edge, this is where I can pick up more green and put that, that brighter green along the edge if I want it to look like it's kind of rippled, I can put um, like a heavier spot in through here, maybe a heavier spot over here, and then allow it to get a little bit darker in through here. So wherever it's the brightest, that's the part that's gonna look like it is sticking out a little bit more to the viewer. I might even add a little bit of white to um, make some of these areas even brighter, but. I'm gonna start with just the green first. I'm gonna go ahead and put up at the top. I feel like that's too much of an indent in through there. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black on my brush to kind of get this. This is a little too indented for me, so I'm just gonna close that gap off just a little bit. There we go. Um, and then pick up more of my green just to get uh, this color to translate up in through here so the hat looks green and not black. It's you, it's gonna, and same thing with the dress. I wanted it to appear to be a green dress with lots of dimension on it as opposed to a black dress. So you could certainly have her wearing black dress. That's totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna lighten up this, put a little bit more of that green. That looks pretty good. I think I'm now going to, I might put a little bit more lightness on these in a minute, but right now I'm gonna pick up black and white little bit of black and white on my brush so I can put um, like a little band of sorts on her hat or ribbon, whatever you want to call it, something like that. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to wash my brush. I feel like I want to add a little bit of extra um, lightness on some of this green. So I'm going to pick up green plus a touch of white. So green plus a touch of white, and this is gonna go light really fast. So if you choose to do this, just kind of be mindful that it will go light really fast. So just do it where you are confident <laughs> in doing it so. So again, just my green plus a little bit of white. And again, this is just to help add a little bit more um, dimension to it. You can put it wherever you want. Um, I kind of want these sleeves to be evidence so you really the attention gets pulled towards um, our bird maybe a little bit of extra over in through here just so we can see the shape of her arm in through here and of course you could put more on her rear end maybe on this left side put a little um, green and white just to kind of accentuate the shape of her and of course you could pull this down and, and just accentuate anything that you want. So if you want it to be a little bit more visible or more evident, just pop 
bump up that contrast, make it make it lighter, make it more um, have more dimension to it with allowing for those um, colors to be uh, more dramatic next to each other, darker darks, lighter lights. And I'm thinking that that's looking pretty, pretty good in my painterly eye. So I'm going to let mine dry. And if I feel I want to enhance anything a little bit, I certainly will. But um, I'm thinking that that I'm digging it this way. <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit more down into here. It's looking pretty fancy. This is quite the quite the fancy dress she has going on for her. Um, and then I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna use my small, oh, no, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use, yeah, I'm gonna use my small brush, the number one uh, round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out the small round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish her hand, oops, her hair <laughs> and her hands. I'm using my small detail number one round. The colors I'm gonna use are blue, black, white, and burnt sienna. And if I need to go into any other colors, I certainly will and I'll let you know. Oh, maybe a little brown too. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just a little tiny detail on her hands with a bit of a skin tone, but again, we're pretty dark in the forest, so I don't need to do too, too much. I'm going to pre-mix myself a little skin tone, so I'm going to use my Burnt Sienna with a little bit of brown and a little bit of white, and that's going to give me just a generic -y kind of skin tone, maybe a little bit more white in there. And then once I have that, I'm just going to paint in her little hands, and if I want to, once I've got this on here, I, again, I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. Um, I'm really just looking to give her a, a little bit more um, believable um, color to them. So I'm doing more the top side of them is gonna be with this um, skin tone. And then I will put a little highlight and a little nail nail on there. So again, just a little skin tone. I'm going to the other hand now and I'm gonna just right where it's, you know, maybe on the outside coming out that um, her dress a little bit. Again, I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot because it could be shadowed by her, her dress. It could be shadowed by the forest. I just wanna give some kind of more believable skin tone than just black. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white to give myself just a little um, little essence of a highlight on the top of this thumb and the um, little palm part, little tiny highlight in through here. Not a lot, just a itty bitty bit. And maybe a little bit more burnt sienna too because that was almost too white. There we go. And I don't want it to disappear either. So if it disappears, you can always add a little, little, um, a little shadow in between it. So just a little bit more on this side over in through here. And um, her fingernails, you can have any color. You could have them red, you could have them, I think that actually, I'm going red. I didn't say I was using red. I'm just gonna put her a little tiny red fingernail in through there, you know, just because I want to. <laughs> it's gonna be the only little red thing in the whole in the whole painting. We'll see if anybody even notices or puts it on. But you know, these are the fun little details that you get to make yourself. Nice little red fingernail. There you go. Maybe she went to the salon before she before she took her walk in the in the um, forest. There we go. Something like that. Perfect. So her hair. What I'm going to do for her hair is um, I'm going to. It's already black. I'm going to. I just need to add some accents to it. So I'm going to use my black, blue, and a little bit of white just to make myself a cool really cool gray, cool as in not stylish cool, but cool as in uh, temperature cool. So I've got this on my palette. Um, and once I've got that, I can just add a tiny bit of water to my brush. And now I can just start creating these little streaks of hair. I love when I'm um, putting hair in motion to go around the shoulders. So if I take this hair and kind of bring it like this and then kind of bump it around 
that shoulder, it immediately tells the viewer the shape of her body. So just kind of finding that spot to um, inject a little bit of that extra detail in there will help, again, the viewer understand um, a little bit more to the story. And then you can add as many little um, flyaway pieces as you want. I'm picking up a touch of black now with my um, light, um, gray color and I'm going to put some down her back and through here. You could put more um, hair if you wanted to. You could make this really um, super full with hair. You could even use brown. Um, so I'm using some of uh, the brown paint in order to just add another tone to it, but that's going to be your call. If you want to add those extra um, bits of tones to it, you can certainly do that or not. I'm picking up some more black right now just to make sure I have uh, enough of my little hairs come, um, out the sides as well as making sure that I have underneath that hat that there's no gap between the hat and any unpainted um, area. Picking up more of my um, custom gray here which is uh, going to allow me to just have some of these pieces kind of coming out from underneath that hat like this and you can have her have wavy hair or straight hair whatever you want now I'm picking up more of my black with a little bit of water on my brush and this is where I can make any of these additional I'm gonna put my hand right in wet paint I know I am um, this is where you can make any of these really tiny additional pieces that will just make it look that much more realistic as you're doing these um, paintings, especially if you want to give it that realistic feel to it. I know we're making a fictional character here, but if I want to have it have enough life in it, if I want it to look like there's motion and movement and, you know, that extra special energy to it, these little nuances of these little tiny hairs poking out her her dress or her hat, That that's what's going to make it even more believable to the viewer. So you can, you know, e explore those kind of avenues. I'm putting a little bit more black down um, underneath her, uh, at the bottom of her hair here. So may make sure that there's lots of shadow right at the bottom of her hairline in through there. So you can have, um, again, just some more dimension to it. If you want a couple pieces to cross over her arm, just put a couple of streaks of the black to cross over the arm and again that all those little things will add more dimension to it. And then I would just sit here and fiddle with it, maybe put a little bit more of the um, of the lighter streaks. You could even add more lightness to it. You could go more brown and white um, in order to even add, you know, maybe she's got extra extra highlights in her hair maybe her hair is extra shiny so you can really have fun with with that and then once you've got that all all done we are going to be using our medium round brush for the next step so you can put this away take out um the number four round if you can ever stop making hair because i love making hair and let me just get one or two more in through here yeah there we go <laughs> That's, that'll do it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some leaves on the ground. I'm gonna be, and on her dress, <laughs> I'm gonna be using my number four round brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are white, yellow, red, and orange. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I really just want it to feel like she's just gallivanting or sauntering through this forest and that she's you know maybe uplifting some of the leaves as she just kind of strolls through the woods so I'm gonna put some leaves that are gonna be bigger over here and they're gonna just kind of almost be catching her dress or you know be on her dress a little bit you can really put them anywhere that you want but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with all four of those colors on my brush at the same time so a little bit of white a little bit of red a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange all on my brush at the same time so this way a really fun color will be created and I don't even really need to think about um, the the 
the order because I just want them to be autumn colors. So I've got all four colors on my brush and I can just make a fun little leaf. You can make another fun little leaf. Maybe this time I pick up more red and I make another one, just trying to make them in different sizes. I don't just want them to be on her dress. I want them to appear as if they are in the forest as well so I'm going to be using these four colors just sporadically in you know kind of conjunction with one another you can make little ones you can make big ones whatever is visually appealing to you I'm really just wiggling my brush in order to create these these shapes that might be representational of leaves so you can of course make yours any any way that you want i just keep alternating those colors and then once i've got a pretty good assortment kind of in this left corner i can start to work my way up her up her dress but again using those same colors so it looks like a similar object is being moved or pulled up her skirt or her her the bottom part of her dress you can, of course, do any any way that you want. You can make little polka dots. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit so I have different size marks. Um, you could even have some kind of flying off the side. It's This is really just a fun accent to it to make it, you know, I don't know, scream fall, <laughs> which is kind of my whole thought process here. Uh, maybe, ooh, maybe we'll put a couple little dots up in through there. I'm digging this. So yellow, white, orange, red in any kind of color combination, making it cross over the edges of her dress. Maybe you've got a couple that just kind of are not floating, but maybe have been just flitted into the air as she's walking. You can have them over her dress. And if you get to a point and you're like, wow, I just did too, too much of that, you can certainly reincorporate some of your other colors back in. You can put more of the orange back in. You can put more of the um, the burnt sienna or the red or the brown back in through there. That's going to be totally up to you if you feel that you need to um, do anything of that sort. But I'm thinking that this looks is pretty much what I had envisioned <laughs> to do. So maybe a couple more up in through here, just different sizes. I, I just didn't want it to look too organized. So that's why I'm just kind of making these little these little marks may be smaller as they go up that dress a little bit. Again, making her one with Mother Nature. You could even put a couple down on this side if you want to. And just this is also a great time to just make sure that you've got everything painted. So if you're missing anything or if you want to add anything, now's, now's that time to do it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes just more, more is better. <laughs> and then once you've got this done, we're going to be using our, yeah, that's super cool. You could put a belt on her if you wanted. Anyways, I think that's really cool. Um, you can, uh, so once we get done, you get done doing this, we're going to be using um, the small brush for the next step. Uh, so if you can stop doing this, you can put this brush away, take out the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm thinking I'm going lower left. I'm using my small detail brush. I'm going with red paint, and I like to sign mine with my initials. So we're gonna just make this look like another little leaf has happened over here. Um, I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could, of course, sign yours any way that you want. You can make up a fun symbol, you can sign it with the date, you can sign it on the back if you want to. It's your painting, you get to identify it whatever way that you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very mystical Halloween-esque image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.